Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 25.7k subscribers. Can we get to 26k? Please subscribe to the channel and like the video down below before we get started. But now let's get started. I saw this graph on Fox News the other day talking about the satisfaction with certain issues since Trump's inauguration in the American public. These issues were pulled. They range from the economy to terrorism to military to race relations to crime. And we're going to analyze these data points. And it looks like from every single metric, Trump's presidency has improved America, at least according to the public, or the American public has gotten a lot more satisfied with issues since Trump's inauguration. Now, this isn't necessarily a complete and total winning recipe, obviously because 68% of people say the state of the economy is good doesn't mean Trump is going to win 68% of the vote. However, the fact that the economy has improved, according to many people, and the state of the economy has improved and people are seeing improvements in their lives will bode very well for Trump come 2020. So according to the public, the state of the economy is viewed much more favorably now than it was three years ago. Now 68% of the public approve. Back then 46% of the public approved of the state of the economy. That is a plus 22 net gain in favor of the economy. Now, this has happened because unemployment, which was going down, has continued to fall. However, the stock market, which was in a dead zone, had continuously gone up and up and up since Trump's inauguration. And it does seem like manufacturing jobs, which were going down, down, down under the past administration, saw an uptick. And there has been a little bit of uncertainty with union strikes and things like that. But hopefully it'll get sorted out. Same thing with the stock market. With the virus in China, it seems like that thing will get sorted out. So it seems like from the economic standpoint, Trump's economy has improved America significantly. If the left wants to sit there and say, but it was doing better before, well, they're more than likely welcome to do that. However, the economy has done significant significantly better and keeps getting better and lives keep getting better. We're headed in the right direction economically. They said there'd be a recession by 2020. I couldn't forget in the debate when Hillary Clinton said, oh, my plan's going to create 13 million new jobs. Your plan's going to lose 6 million jobs because all of these so-called economists said so. But at the end of the day, it looks like Trump's economy has continued the job growth and accelerated the job growth, preferably in the sectors that much needed the job growth, where you have net gains of jobs. You might might have some jobs that are being outsourced, but then you have new jobs coming in and you have more jobs coming in. For So from the state of the U.S. economy, a lot more people are approving of the state of the economy now than they were back then. That is a bold, that is great, that is a winning issue for Trump come 2020. That's possibly what's going to carry him over the finish line, assuming he does end up winning. So that's for the state of the economy. The next one is security from terrorism. Back then, it seemed like you had a terrorist attack. You had San Bernardino, Pulse Nightclub. You had the Somalian on Ohio State's campus back in 2016. A lot of terrorist attacks before 2017. When Trump got in office, you noticed a decrease in foreign terrorist attacks. You noticed a decrease in these significantly. Now, maybe the travel ban has something to do with it. Maybe it doesn't. But a lot more people feel like they are a lot more secure with Trump at the helm. They feel like they are a lot more secured from terrorism. And yes, you do have a couple of... Uh, I guess you would say lone wolf, nut job, homegrown terrorists over the past couple of years. But even though it seems like those are fading away a little bit in recent years and recent months, I think you had the couple of crazy people that went and shot up the synagogue. But apparently the left will try to blame that on Trump, despite none of the synagogue shooters actually supported the president. Actually, both of them hated the president. Although I think that they both pledged allegiance to PewDiePie when they did it or something like that. But apparently when it comes to terrorism, I think a lot of Americans feel like they are more secure. And if not, it seems like they will feel secure with Trump at the helm. When there was a terrorist attack under Obama, it seemed like he was too afraid to name the actual terror threat. He was too afraid to name names. Trump will name names. He'll say radical Islamic terrorism. He'll say anti-Semitism. If you seek the Jews' destruction, we'll seek your destruction. So on that front, it seems like Trump is launching a great all-out end on terrorism. And I think a lot of voters see that. And a lot of voters say, hey, well, Trump cares a lot about protecting this country from inside threats and outside threats. So I think a lot of people are going to vote for him based on his track record. Did I not mention he killed Baghdadi and then he got the second in line and then he got Soleimani and then he completely defeated ISIS 100% almost. They've lost all of their territory since he's taken office. Just another great winning issue for the president. So it seems like on terrorism and the economy, those are two winning issues. 
issues. Those were hard issues uh, back in the day, big issues. But it seems like Trump has the upper edge on both of these issues to a very large degree. When you look at the CNN exit polls back then and you look at these these things and they say, what is your preference? What do you want to see the candidate do? Some people said economy. Some people said immigration. What's your biggest issue? It seems like all those bases Trump has covered significantly, and that could very well, 1% here, 2% there, an increase in voting for Trump based on his record alone. It seems like from that he could gain a whole lot of support moving ahead of November, and that's possibly what could draw him a victory over somebody like, let's say, Joe Biden, who's been in public office for his entire life and did nothing but renamed a couple of post offices after himself and signed a bill that put a bunch of black people in prison. So it doesn't really seem like Joe Biden is going to be able to take Trump hand in hand when he's out there telling voters what state he's in and getting the state wrong or just going over there and telling voters, oh, this is why your wife left you or vote for the other guy based on just a simple disagreement. This is not a candidate that's going to be able to win. This is not the best candidate to take on President Trump, a president that undisputably has a significant amount of accomplishments to his name, despite only being president for three years. Some say he did more in three years than Obama did in eight years, and they're accurate to a certain degree. But that's for um, the security of terrorism one. Now let's get back on track. Military strength and preparedness. Now, apparently we were going to war a month ago. Everyone was ready to go to war, and just as I predicted, nothing came of it. We're now in February. And it, there is just absolutely no World War III. We're not at war with Iran. It does seem like we're prepared to go to war with Iran if we have to. Trump spent a lot of money building up our military. Our military had been depleted in recent years by spending. Trump increased spending for the military, and that actually helped out a lot. So apparently one could see why more people are satisfied with our military strength and preparedness. So it does seem like on that front, 81% of Americans approve of that. I mean, Trump definitely is prepared to go hand in hand with any dictator or wherever he goes over. He talks to Kim Jong-un. Maybe we haven't gotten enough done with Kim Jong-un. Maybe we will have to go to war one day with him. But apparently for now, it does seem like in terms of preparedness, we're doing fairly well on that front. The state of race relations one is the most significant in my opinion. Yes, it's low, but I think a lot of people don't understand this when especially people on the left the morons on the left that still think president trump is some sort of racist or bigot or whatever uh, apparently that is just not the case state of race relations in this country according to the public has gotten significantly better the left they'll pull out their fake hate crime statistics and a lot of those hate crimes are by the way faked look at jussie look at that one football player in tampa they're literally having to make up hate crimes in order to build this narrative and the narrative is completely failing strength of race relations yes you had the Charlottesville epidemic that was absolutely terrible, but ever since then, it seems like race relations in this country have moved it the right direction. That seemed to be the turning point for race relations in this country. You've got a great economy to boot. Trump is talking to the black community. He passed the First Step Act. He's doing things that nobody really could think, and I think it's opening a lot of people's eyes. You saw the Kansas City Chiefs player the other day wear the sweater that had Trump and Kanye on it, saying this was a very important meeting in history. Whether you thought it was ironic or not, it took him a lot of balls in order to go out there and do that. And I definitely think race relations in this country are improving. The left will really try and do and twist these words and try to make it seem like race relations are terrible. But I think a lot of it has to come down to the media. I don't think race relations have changed much. It's the way the media has covered things, the way the media has significantly covered the police shootings. We really haven't seen any of those in the past couple of years. Maybe that's part of the reason why. A lot of that has to do with the media. It's not Trump. It's not even Obama. I don't think Obama did enough against it. I definitely think Trump is standing up for all Americans. But when you look at the strength of race relations, it does seem like you have a president that treats everybody equally and like it or not, whether the media says that will improve race relations or not, it seems like it actually has in the strength of race relations. Uh, in this country is, is increasing as, as the public agrees with that statement. So apparently from that standpoint, Trump is doing a lot better than he did beforehand. I mean, it, uh, bad, yeah, obviously back in 2017, it was much different than it is now, but all of the racist people that uh, allegedly supported him back then, a lot of them, I assume, are feds, either have soured on him, don't support him, or support Andrew Yang or Tulsi Gabbard. But that's beside that point. Now, the last point on here is policies to reduce or control crime. Crime was going up a little bit under Obama under the last two years. However, does it really matter because crime was going down for 20 years beforehand and just a little uptick doesn't really mean much. A lot of that could be 
because of the civil unrest. A lot of that could be because of the media and the way the media is covering things such as police shootings. So you've had an increased uh, presence of, of crime in, in the area where you've had more riots and things like that. However, that's gone down. I think crime has gone down just a little bit. Uh, policies to reduce and control crime. Trump is being tough on the border, at least with illegal immigration. That's going to help him. So when you look at this poll and you look at these polls, and by the way, this poll is not from Fox News. This poll is from Gallup, which is actually a fairly left wing source for polling. Um, they are respected, though. They are historically respected for polling. It does seem like Trump's presidency is improving the lives of a lot of people. And not everybody, but most people, when you ask them, four years ago, were you better today or were you better four years ago? I think a lot of people financially are just better today outside of this Twitter sphere where you have these resistards complaining, people trying to complain and obstruct Trump at any chance they have, and you look at what's going on in the Senate. And that's just reflected of that. So when you look at this, I personally think Trump's going to win a lot of this has to just stem from with this data is alone. And that's basically it for this video. Tell me what you think of the comments. But anyways, guys, like this video. Subscribe down below. Hit the bell for notifications. Follow me on social media. Join the Discord. Join the subreddit. Join the Patreon. Links in description. Anyways, guys, thanks everybody for watching. Red Eagle, out.